Uh, we've had some initial discussions with them. So that is an option. I'm not saying it's a good or bad option. I'm just saying it's something that we can consider. And of course, uh, I believe you should uh, explore and start the process of expanding your, your CCN. I believe that to be a very prudent uh, move on your, on, your, on your part. And the other thing I would like to suggest is, uh, is for you all to implement a, a water impact tool. Uh, and I'm not sure if you all are familiar with uh, what that is, but generally most communities, the vast majority of communities have a water impact fee where uh, developers, when they come in with their, uh, their flats and their development, that they have to pay some kind of fee based on their equivalent dwelling units and acreage or what have you uh, to, to a municipality. That goes in a bank account. And then when the city needs to do improvements, they can take that money and apply it. And, and let me give you a great example of uh, the plaza ground storage tank. Uh, if you had employed a, a, uh, an impact fee 10 years ago, you would have a very significant sum of money in a bank account, and you could use that to replace the tank or repair it or whatever you want to do. As it sits today, you have to take money out of that, out of your general fund to do that. Um, I, 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 I can't emphasize enough that is something that you should pursue. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great revenue source uh, for the city, and it's paid for by people who impact your system. So it's, it's a very fair way for you to build up money that you can do uh, infrastructure improvements with. And uh, there are impact fees for wastewater, <coughs> streets, drainage, and other things as well that you really should consider. Are there any questions on uh, the water modeling effort? No? How long do you think before it's finished? Pardon? How long do you think before it's finished? As I said, uh, uh, we will definitely be finished in June. I think we'll be substantially complete uh, around April. Uh, uh, but we want to give you an opportunity to uh, review and get us to calibrate and what have you. So, uh, late spring, early summer is when we expect to be finished. several pages. Uh, there's a lot of technical stuff in there, and I'm going to attempt to just 
kind of give you the highlights. Um, as I said, we're working with a budget of about $875,000. I believe that the, the total estimate of repairs was around 2.6 million. I saw that figure somewhere. So obviously, we can't do everything. So we had to figure out what should we do with the 875 and what can we do. And so what this spreadsheet shows is everything above, above that thick black line that we think we can get done <coughs> with the $875,000. And we also believe that those first seven items are the most important. And at the end of the day, we'll solve uh, most of the problems that exist out there. Uh, so we're, we were rather pleased with how all that came together. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail on each one of these seven items, but I do want to briefly try to explain to you uh, the repairs that are being done. Um, first of all, uh, the highest priority by far is to get the, the roof fixed, because that's the main source of the water that's entering the building and causing a lot of other problems. Okay? Uh, the picture on the left is a really bad picture of the roof that I got off of Google. And I couldn't find another one. But uh, just to try to explain the, the, the roof components here, uh, you have two types of roofs, actually. You have a, a metal roof here and here and here. Uh, and then uh, you have a flat uh, bitumen roof uh, below. And all the water that hits the metal roof drains onto the bituminous roof and then after a bunch of scuppers. So uh, that's kind of how it works. <coughs> this picture in the upper right here uh, shows you the difference between those two roofs. Here's the metal uh, sloped roof, and then here's the flat uh, bitumen roof. I just want to show you what it looks like. Um, and the, the, the main problem is the bitumen roof. It's got a number of holes in it for whatever reason. And uh, this, this picture here just kind of gives you an example of, of one of the holes that we were able to see on our, on our visit. And the reports that were done in front of the lawsuit identify many, many more. But that's basically the problem. Uh, the metal roof has some minor issues along the ridge line. Uh, I don't think it's a large source of, of water, but it is some, and, and we should be able to fix that pretty easily. Uh, the building envelope has some leaks, and when I say building envelope, what I really mean is the walls, the windows, and the roof. It's kind of the, the skeleton uh, of the building. Uh, it has some places where uh, it's holding water and it, and it leaks, and, and those have to be repaired. Uh, the HVA system doesn't work uh, like it should, and there's a good reason. Um, this is a, that same picture of your roof. If you notice, the roof has several individual uh, HVAC air conditioning systems on top of it. Okay, it has 20 plus different units. Okay, um, all of those units are supposed to be controlled by this what we call central control unit. It's kind of like the, the brains of the system, and it's designed as a very smart system. Okay, it senses temperature differences and turns certain units on at the right time. Uh, that system, for reasons we don't necessarily understand, has been turned off and is not in use. Okay? We've been told that there's wiring problems, that it's burnt out, it's fried. We don't exactly know what's wrong with it, uh, but it's not working. So basically, those 20 plus units are being run manually. Okay? And they're being run individually and manually, and they're not necessarily being run as a system as efficiently like they're supposed to. And that's part of the problem. Uh, you know, air conditioning units uh, draw in air from the outside, cool the air, and then they, they also have an exhaust function where they, they pump the air out. Okay? And if, if that isn't done in the right sequence, you can have humidity that builds up inside your building. And that's part of you know, what's wrong with the event center now. There's humidity that can't get out of the building and there's mold and what have you. So 
Uh, our goal is to go in there uh, either and fix or replace that controller, uh, get it all wired to back up and run it as a system, test it, balance it, and get it back to where it was designed to run. Okay. Make sense? Yes, sir. What's on the why so many units? Uh, well, it's it's a it's a sizable structure. Um, we did not really dig into you know the the uh, the original <coughs> design and and why units are where they are and how big they are. It, it it really wasn't our focus. Our focus was to look forward. How do we fix? How do we fix? So I, I really can't ask your answer your question other than it's a big structure. And when it's hot, it takes a lot to cool it. And when it's cold, it takes a lot to heat it. Uh, and several units are required. Uh, as far as we know, it was a well-designed system. Uh, as far as we know, uh, the, the air conditioning system and the heater units are of adequate size. It's the right type of equipment. Uh, it's just not working as a system. And, and they've been doing a pretty good job of running them individually on manual, but it's just not running as an efficient system as it was intended to be. Yes, because uh, cause I work for Johnson Controls. Yes, sir. And that's a big uh, building and, and, and we usually install about one unit in the air. A big central cooling. Yeah, some, some kind of central cooling unit. Uh, yeah, like I said, we, we, didn't, uh, we didn't do that kind of analysis. Now, once it, this wiring gets fixed, yes. you said that it would automatically control the whole thing. Yes. So what happens to the areas that are not being used? The AC will go on anyway? Uh, you can program. That, that central, uh, that central <coughs> unit there is, is basically a computer. And you can pro program it to op operate in many different scenarios. So if you have a part of the building that you, might, you know you're not going to use for a month, you can program it in there, and it saves you money. So it, it has many, many capabilities. Um, of course, uh, one of the problems is that uh, mold has uh, formed in the building, and this is due to the high amounts of humidity and the, the lack of the, the inability to get water out of your structure. Okay, so. Uh, there's some rooms and there's a cooler that have mold. Once we fix the roof, once we fix the air conditioning system, once we fix the envelope, we'll go in there and remediate the mold. And then we can return those uh, rooms to use. There are some problems on the outside of the building. Uh, believe it or not, uh, the walls of the building are designed to breathe a little bit you have moisture that can be trapped inside the walls and that so so they, they, they actually are designed to breathe. Uh, the problem is that uh, uh, the sidewalks and the grading around the building uh, do not provide enough space, vertical space between those walls and the sidewalk. So the water it's blocking water from, from getting out. Uh, so we're going to have to do some regrading and, and construction of some of the flat work around the building to lower those elevations like the walls were. <coughs> One of the most important things that uh, we had to do was prioritize the improvements. What do we want to do first and what can wait? Uh, and this is just kind of a, a, a summary of you know, our mindset in terms of prioritization. First of all, we wanted to stop water from getting into the building. <coughs> And we're going to do the roof repairs uh, and the, uh, the envelope repairs to accomplish that. Second priority was getting the uh, HVA system back into the working <coughs> order as it was originally designed. Uh, so we're going to work on that central control unit and we're going to get that, that system restored. Third, uh, we wanted to help water get out of the building. Uh, so that's all that site creating and, and uh, flat work around the outside of the building. Uh, and then when we've been able to accomplish that, we're going to remediate, remediate the uh, mold. So those are the, those are the priorities. Uh, beyond that, we're not going to be able to afford to, to do any improvements. So uh, that, those improvements are just going to have to wait until 
there's available for them. But those are our priorities. What's a roof parapet? A roof parapet. Uh, that's kind of like a ridge line. Another word for a ridge line. So the peak of the peak of the roof. Okay, so we fix the roof and we don't fix that? Is that an issue? Um, probably not a big issue. Uh, you know, it's, it's like if we do those four priorities, we'll have solved 90% of the problems. Uh, but there's still going to be other things that eventually need to be done. But these are the big ones. Project delivery. How are we going to basically get all this done? Uh, what we're recommending is that the city hire and procure a general contractor. Okay? Come in and do the roof repairs, the wall repairs, site grading, and the mold remediation. Okay? Um, typically, a city would go through a, a competitive design bid uh, build process and, and basically award the contractor to the lowest bidder. We'd like uh, to recommend that the city use a competitive uh, seal proposal approach. And, and the, the difference is, is that the contractor not only submits a price based on the construction documents, but he also submits his qualifications, he submits his project approach, uh, he submits information on the people that he's going to assign to the project, and then in the course of awarding, an evaluation is done of all of those, okay? and there's a percentage breakdown of how much those things are worth. So you may, under a traditional procurement, 100% of the evaluation is on the cost. Okay? What we're suggesting is to lower that to maybe 70 or 80% and uh, give qualifications and project approach 20 or 30% of the evaluation. So you have an opportunity to sit down with that contractor, interview him, ask him questions, and evaluate him not only on his price, but his qualifications and project approach. Because you have an event center that is operating all the time. And you're going to have a contractor out there who's going to be working while the event center is in operation. And there needs to be a very good working relationship. Yes. You need a person who understands what, your, what events you have going on and that you can work with that person. If you just go low bid, you don't know what you're getting. You're just getting the lowest price. So we're encouraging you to use the competitive seal proposal because at the end of the day, I think you're going to get a better contract than that. Jeff, and are we ready to do something like that? Do we have a scope of work prepared? Uh, let me finish this and I'll get to that question if you don't mind. Uh, there's a, a piece that we don't think should be done under the general contractor and that's the APA system. Uh, uh, we're dealing with a, a pretty complicated piece of uh, computer with the, with the central control unit. Uh, and we want to bring in uh, the manufacturer or somebody who knows a lot about them and just negotiate uh, a price and so they can go in there and work with us at the same time and get it done right. Uh, it's very hard to quantify uh, in a set of construction documents, exactly what we want to do with that. So we want to bring in somebody with the expertise that we can work with on a daily basis, daily basis to get that thing up and running. Same thing with the HBA system. We want somebody to really work on an hourly basis, monitor their progress, work hand in hand to get the system up and running. So we're, we're recommending actually that you bring them on as a vendor, okay, and and work with them on a day to day basis. So that would be outside of a, a bid scenario. All right, you asked um, what, basically what are the next steps. Um, we're, right now we're working on a fee proposal to the city of Floresville to do what we're called phase two for the design. Basically put together those construction documents that contractors will need to, to bid on. Okay? Uh, and uh, uh, we'll probably have that uh, next week. Uh, and hopefully by March we can uh, be authorized to proceed. <coughs> We're expecting about a three or four month uh, design window where we need to get our work done, put together the construction documents. We'll put it up, up for bid this summer, and then hopefully we'll, uh, we'll award sometime.
sometime early fall. And we're estimating that the repairs, all the repairs, can be done somewhere between four to six months. That's kind of a rough estimate. And there's good news here. Um, we think that all these repairs uh, can be done without interrupting uh, the scheduling or the operations of the uh, event center. There's going to be inconveniences, but the center can be continued to run and schedule events. Uh, and again, back, back on the competitive sales proposal, uh, you want a contractor that's willing to work with you on, on that particular issue. Uh, there's going to be some events where you don't want him around. He's going to have to be mobilized and lose equipment. You're, you're going to want somebody who you can work with. And you, you, you might not get that. You probably won't get that under a hard bid scenario. So those are, those are, those are basically the, the next implementation steps. Yes, that will be our part. That will be the design uh, of the uh, of the repairs and then uh, preparation of the contract documents, which is the plans, the specifications, the performance specs, all the running documents, the documents, etc. Uh, we need a little time. This is an important project, uh, and, and, and repairs are are a little on the difficult side to. Uh, design it has to be a little more performance oriented. For example, a roof. You know, we can tell them to plug holes in a certain way, but we also need to put a performance spec in there that says, you know, the, the bitumen roof has to hold, you know, six inches of water for three days, or you know, there has to be some kind of performance spec in there so we know that it's going to work out. Yeah. Are there any questions? One of the things uh, Mayor Lebe was important to me when this group is to receive some type of warranty once this work is done. And uh, Tom has assured me that we would get a warranty with this group in reference to do that. And I believe he said we're going to pull out the HVAC, actually the company that actually designed and made this unit to be actually coming in to give you the operation. So we're hoping to really work with it. It's a key issue, and for a matter of the record, uh, all the engineering fees will be assessed to that dollar amount. So his fee, as well as the construction, is all coming out of that settlement amount. Yes. And uh, we're going to provide uh, some training, uh, and training manuals, operational manuals, to the folks that have to maintain to make sure that they know how to work the system. Yes. So, and it's a good Yes. Any questions? <coughs> <coughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> You've earned your money tonight. I really want to thank you for uh, presenting and counsel. Uh, you do have these, and in your report, um, I'll refer to uh, the letter that reference the scope of doing that. Thank you. Thank you for asking this submission. You're welcome. Uh, I think the list is going to grow for time, but that's the That's the That's the Okay, now we're going to go on to item um, 1E financials for October, November, and December 2014. Revenue and expense fund balances, sales tax report. Tony, you have two minutes. <laughs> for three months. You've been on vacation? No, but I was able to throw prior year. Good. And that's the reason why the delay. Um, you have on each month a spreadsheet where it explains, explain, it gives you a, a, a spreadsheet with the original budget that was approved, uh, with the beginning balance, which uh, it is not audited yet, so it is subject to change. I do not foresee it changing a lot, but there's always a few adjustments they have to be done at the end of the year. For the month of October, the revenues are very low, we did not start collecting uh, property taxes until the month of November. And it was somewhere in between, I want to say, the 14th or the 15th of the month when we started uh, collecting the revenues. Expenditures were very low. I uh, limit the staff in regards to the expenditures. I said, uh, you need to give us at least the first month of October, so only emergencies or the, the Mayor necessities will be spent. And as you can see, uh, on the expenditures, the column is very low. 
and our balances are also um, very low because we don't have the revenues, we're not doing the expenditures. I went ahead and I um, did a fund guideline on the bottom of the spreadsheet, and I'm talking about a general fund that we begin with about 55% of expenditures of the revenues collected for the month. We want to keep it that way. I want to keep it that way. That will assist us uh, through the year to start uh, accumulating some fund balance. So we don't want to spend everything that we collect on a monthly basis. The sales tax for the month, and I wanted to add that I added this line as for um, Mr. Nieto, Councilman Nieto. Uh, and I want to um, go ahead and, and uh, uh, state that the sales tax collected for the month of October were 265576 The CE allocation is 132788 which is an increase from October of 2013 of 20,746. I want to go ahead and ask you if you can go to the uh, back of the financials. And you have on the back, you have the schedule of the sales tax for the month of, of October. I went ahead and I did all three months because I didn't want to uh, overload you with paperwork. So, and, and it's breakdown by month. So the first uh, spreadsheet is the total collection. And then it gives you the percentage on the top of the column, the percentage that goes to each entity. The city portion is 50% of the sales tax collected. Street maintenance uh, takes 12.50%. Uh, 4A Corporation takes 12.50% and EDC takes 25% of the sales tax collected. The second page is the itemized sales tax collected for the month of October for the city owned. And the square on the bottom, it explains to you that the collection for, the, for last month, a month collected last year of, for the same month, it was 129,742. For current month, it was 130,831, which is a 0.84% addition. And I want to apologize, but I keep on mentioning October, but this is for the three months. This is for the three months. I didn't want to go ahead and do each month at a time, so this is for the three months. So the total difference for the three months all the way to December is 1,090. So as you can see, we had a big increase in the month of October, and then November and December started slowing down on the sales tax collection. When I presented the month of September financial, I did not present it, the sales tax. And I wanna go ahead and give you these as a um, summary of the entire year. You also have the first page where it, where it gives you the total collection for each month, and then it gives you a total at the bottom. And the total for 2013-2014 collected taxes was 3174000 $125. The portion for the city was one million five eighty seven zero seventy three, and the other entities have their allocation as for the percentage. Can I have a question? Yes. On well, the Foy Corporation, there's already four hundred thousand dollars collected in sales tax. Why does the board, a board, feel that the general fund? is supporting the event center. Because we are doing the general operating uh, funding. The sales tax money is tied to the bond payments. And I think 
take the bond payment is $100,000 on one, on one and $90,000 on the other? Yes. Okay, that's under $90,000. Let's say two hundred thousand, and we're collecting four hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Some of the some of this money is also going for the operations, but we we're gonna need these three hundred thousand dollars for the for the new payment. And I I'm even thinking that we're gonna need a, a little bit more than three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand for the payment. When it's restructured. Yes, for the And I don't know if you remember the fund balance on 4A was on the negative. I believe when I started working here was at six million and currently is down to a three million. So part of the sales tax money is going to, to that. And I can sit down with you and explain this more in detail if you would like. So that way I can I think we only seven months, but I have seen it. It's what I'm explaining right now. Ms. Yeah, uh, Moreno, when you look at the big picture, like on her spreadsheet, it gives you because she's showing off of the actual uh, fund balance, like off the total debt. And mm -hmm. what you're asking for is like for the year. Mm -hmm. better, I mean, like she said, she could probably explain a little bit better. But the breakdown is in the report, either the void for the year, as far as but you're correct. I mean, they're not in the negative. I mean, we collecting just from a year's let's just look at the debt itself, the operating costs. I mean, when you look at collecting three hundred ninety-six thousand dollars, it covers with you know with your revenues from uh, rentals and concessions. It's paying for itself now because of the, the lower amount that we're paying off on the debt. But you're, what you're implying is you know when the debt increases this year, when we re, when we uh, redo the bonds, that you know we'll need every penny of that. Right. It's correct right now. So there there is a surplus right now. Because of the amount, I mean, we never projected that we would be getting 396,000 396, per year. That's a huge increase from when we first built, built the building and on the amount that we were collecting. So it is a larger amount, but the spreadsheet only gives you from the total debt owed. So of course it's a negative because if you look at the total bond payment, right. is what this shows. But the breakdown on the inside of the four year would be the breakdown for the year, or even the county can provide that. This isn't a this isn't a fiscal breakdown. For you. No. no. And, an and if you if you look at the, uh, the uh, current budget for 2014-2015 for 4A, we have it right now at one million five hundred six. But that includes the money that we're going to be using for the construction, the settlement money. It includes that money. So it takes about five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars to operate the, the civic center, and we're only collecting three hundred. Four hundred thousand dollars in in sales tax. The the other revenue is coming from the rentals and the concession sales and other revenue. The five hundred thousand you're talking about includes the bond payment and uh, yes. utilities and utilities and uh, salaries. And yes. That's, that's the only revenue that we're looking at. It's just the sales tax. Yes. Basically, we're running out of. Connie, the money from the rentals and the concessions does go into this 570, right? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And now what I did for this year, so that way we can see it better, uh, when I started working here, all of these revenues were separated. Uh, sales tax were going to the fund 570, but the operating expenses were in a department or general fund. So if you wanted to see the real picture of the 4A, you couldn't, because part of it was on a department in, in general fund, and the other part was in the 570 fund. So what I did this year with this budget is I put everything together on the 570 fund. So that way we just run one balance sheet, one expenditure in revenue, and we get the total picture there. Okay. And behind this cover sheet, you have and I wanted to give you these for information so you see where these uh, numbers are coming from. I gave you a printout of the comptroller's office where it says the, to the total tax allocated to the city of Floresville. This is something that is available for the public. Anybody can go to the comptroller's office and just type in city of Floresville tax, sales tax collections and you can pull out this report. And this is what we, I match. I reconcile these reports to the collections that are coming in into the bank. <coughs> okay. 
And then the, the other spreadsheets that follow are just like the ones that I just presented to you for the month of October, November, and December. But this is for the entire year for each unit, for the CD, for the street maintenance, for uh, 4A and 4B. But so this is only information for you. I would like to continue with the financials for the month of November. In the month of November, as you can see, our revenues increased year to date, including October and November. That's a million one twenty four six six six, and that is for all the governmental funds, including three hundred one for the debt service fund for hotel motel tax maintenance and as you can see on the list. General fund collected seven hundred and forty two thousand eight hundred and eight ninety eight in revenue. Expenditure, as I said, I want to keep them to at least fifty percent of what we are collecting year to date or each month. And as you can see our uh, expenditures were at a little bit higher and the reason for that is because I really limit them. In the month of October. So November, they started buying the supplies and anything else, other supplies that they needed to operate. Okay. Uh, utilities also is the same for the month of November. Uh, 407, 321 was collected in revenue. And 362 and 11 dollars were for expenditures. Uh, I want to say that for the month of November, that's when we started very aggressive with the plasma well uh, repairs, and we spent quite a, a bit of money on that on those repairs. So that is reflected in the month of November and the month of December. Do you have any questions for the month of November? that is because a lot, including myself, a lot of people wait until they get their income tax to pay their, their property taxes. So that's when you see the increase. Okay. So for the uh, general fund for the month of December, we got community or year to date uh, revenues of a million seven hundred and eighty four thousand. And the expenditures are seven hundred and forty four six thirty five. I still want to achieve the 50%, but I think this is slightly higher than that. I will work on that. For the utilities, revenues are 577,902, and expenditures are 542,194. And it's like I said, part of this money, these expenditures are due to the path of well repair. And also, we had a major <coughs> breakdown on equipment that we had to replace. And, and then uh, for the month of January, we had to also purchase uh, two trucks for the utility department. Uh, sales tax for the month of December, and it is December, not November. I'm sorry for that typo. Is 261,663. <coughs> City allocation is 130,831 with an increase of 1,090. <coughs> Do you have any questions? Real quick, Connie, just uh, not so much a question. Is this correct? I mean, the general fund, uh, I know these are on audit, but $171,094 uh, at the end of October and at the end of December, 262. <coughs> so a 35% increase on general fund? Are you talking about at the ending? ending yeah, balance? just your ending balance. Yes, yeah. But I, I want to achieve the 50%. That's, that's 
that's that's a good job. I mean, 35% in a 90-day period is a really good job. So good job, Henry. That, that's awesome. Staff, everybody. That's, and that, that, those are great leaps. I mean, 35%. You continue that or more. I mean, that, that's really good. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, that concludes my presentation of the financials, and I assure you I will not wait three months to pretend I'm not a financial. <laughs> <laughs>
sign ordinances, fence ordinances, demolition ordinances, site work ordinances, a parking ordinance review. Council uh, of we want to definitely take care of that so that it's you know, friendly to the community and reference to that and land use. Uh, you will have the approved for Chris Stewart to assist me in reference to that. He's the one who helped us work with the land use plan. What I would like to do is to present you all one meeting, let you look at the two of them, and then at the following meeting to approve and to make any of the changes. So we will be presenting and asking you to make your approvals. Attached to my report also is an updated uh, equipment, what's new, what's old, what's repaired, so that as we added those new equipment, that's added as well. We are then at the end of my report. Do you all have any questions? Um, if I've been there for a matter of record, I did check my phone again, and Councilman uh, Rodriguez did text and say he was not able to make a meeting tonight. So we put that that he did text and ask to be excused. Are there any questions? Please, as Connie offered earlier, if you need to come and meet with me or have any discussions, my door is available. You can call me, come by, text, email, and we'll be more than happy to share with you all the wonderful things the staff is doing. Into my report. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to go on to item 1G, City Employees Smart Idea Program. Councilman Oakley? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, this looks yeah. double that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mayor. This is a safety smart program that's uh, basically focused on safety, quality, and cost of safety. It's okay. Safety in the work environment, quality of work, providing cost savings. These ideas would be required to be implemented in a low or nominal cost and in a timely manner. The program would be as follows. An employee would submit in writing the idea and provide drawings for pages to support these small ideas. A review committee consisting of five members, the city manager, mayor, councilman, and supervisors will review and rate the small idea. Based on the review committee, recommendations, the employee smart idea could be implemented and the employee would receive a financial award for the small idea. No handouts. A budget of 2000 is suggested. Five, 
fifty dollars to one hundred fifty max per reward depending on the idea. Please note the funding can be transferred from the general fund budget. <clears throat> Let's talk about safety. Safety is very critical for a job. Yeah, we're seeing this uh, just from uh, IBS. Uh, there was a picture there, a manhole. And if y'all notice, the employee was going down. He had his harness. But guess what? He, he had a rope. If that employee goes down, this was going down with them. There are recommendations that the city employees can come up with. A safety harness, a fall protection. Fall protection would secure that that individual would not hurt himself and save the city's insurance rates that will hurt us. Hard hats, safety goggles, who wears them, why, where? We have to implement those. That is cost savings. This is a win-win for the city and the city employees. All city employees. PD, front office, parks, all of them. And of course, cost savings. That's a win-win. I mean, you know, this smart idea is used at where I work, Johnson Controls. We haven't had an eye injury since a decade or so. Why? Because individuals were getting hurt. We want those individuals to go back home to their 